everyone and welcome back to the Mad Max podcast. Today's review is going to be about The Goldfinch. It came out on Friday based on the 2013 novel of the same name by Donna Tartt. It actually won the 2014 Pulitzer Prize for Fiction. And it is actually uh, a book that I have read recently uh, because I heard that they were doing a movie about it. The casting had just started. And uh, we got some opinions, but for now, let's talk about the plot. So the plot follows, uh, the beginning of the story follows a young 13-year-old boy named Theo Decker. Basically, him and his mom go to the uh, the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Uh, he is standing in front of a painting called The Goldfinch. And a, bombing happen- a bomb happens. Um, it's a terrorist bomb. His mom's in another room. He runs home because they say, you know, if they ever get separated, they're going to meet at the house and... He goes there, waits for her, and waits for her, and waits for her, and she never comes. So she actually passed away due to the bombing. And the rest of the story is just about uh, Theo trying to live his life. Um, He goes through, passes through several people, living with different people. Um, And the book spans about a good 15, 20 year period, maybe. Um, I might be wrong in my timeline there. but, But yeah, we follow him through his story <clears throat> and ultimately finding out that he found the goldfinch penny uh painting um after the bombing and and stole it <laughs> and this story is about about theo and about the painting and uh if you haven't read it it's a very good read um the movie uh i can't i can't say say i liked it and enjoyed it as much as reading the book so uh, but first, let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the cast. So we have um, really, really well known people, great people in this movie. We have Nicole Kidman, we have Jeffrey Wright, we have Ansel Argot, we have uh, Luke Wilson, Sarah Paulson, um, a young uh, Oaks Fegley that's playing uh, young Theo, and Ansel Argot is playing um, older Theo. So the movie in itself is it, the casting is done really really well um and the cinematography in this film is absolutely breathtaking the music's great um just my overall problem with it is that it was really it was really choppy the scenes just weren't coherent and it it just seemed like if I felt like if I hadn't have read the book I would have had a hard time keeping up um now the story to screen um the way that it was done is very well a lot maybe 90 percent of the dialogue is from the book um and a lot of the big significant um moments that happen in the novel are in the book or i'm sorry uh, that happened in the novel or in the movie but it's everything that was in between um isn't there and it's kind of hard to translate a book that's almost 800 pages to a two and a half hour movie and I think that was the struggle here. Um, I think this would have been better suited as a like a mini se- uh, mini series on HBO, which you know, like Sharp Objects was. Sharp Objects was maybe not even three hundred page book, but it had like a six to eight. I can't remember the, a number of episodes mini <laughs> series on HBO, and this has almost uh, eight hundred pages. And you just can't put the amount of depth and feeling and everything you need to feel for this type of story in the in a movie. You just can't. It's and it's really sad because it's you know life is full of these big moments, but in everything that leads up to those moments are what is significant in understanding the the importance of you know those life events that happen and they missed it in the movie they really did um so overall i i can't say that i enjoy the movie very much um again i I, it was really lackluster to me and uh if i wasn't seeing it in the theater with somebody else i i might have left i really did think about it because i just i felt horrible for i felt horrible for the whole thing um it's, it, it's not a bad movie, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't, this novel is just so good, and it's, it talks about struggle, and struggle, addiction, 
the trail, um, it makes you feel all those emotions, like incredible highs and incredible lows. And it just didn't, it, it, the movie also had those parallels, but the feeling and emotion wasn't there because the build that gets you there in those moments was completely missing. So, um, so yeah, so I would say if you want to go see the movie, if you're curious enough, I mean, go, go see it. But if you haven't read the book, I suggest that you read the book first. And I mean, Oliver doesn't seem to agree, but, <laughs> but I would, I mean, just to, you know, give you a frame of reference. Um, I read the book, um, in about a week, which, you know, again, it's almost 800 pages. So I was completely obsessed with the book whenever I was reading it. Like I had to, I had to just read it. Like I had to finish the story and find out what happens and live in this world that uh, Donna Tartt built, you know, following Theo. And it just, the movie just didn't get me there. Um, but if you have seen it, you know, please let's talk about it in the comments if you enjoyed it. If you did read the book and you did enjoy the movie, um, also talk about it in the comments because I really want to know everybody's opinion. Um, I've read a lot of, I've read a lot of reviews on people that like the book and enjoyed the movie. But I just, I would like to be able to talk to those people because I really, I don't know, I, maybe I was missing something in the movie, maybe I was expecting too much. Um, I expected scenes to be cut, you know, obviously, but I didn't expect the the build to be, the build to everything to be cut off and the cut scenes and just how it was edited, I just, it, ugh, I didn't like it at all. Um, I just thought it, the, the book flowed in a way that made you want to keep reading and made it easy to keep reading. And the movie was so choppy at times and just you're, you're in modern day following Theo in one minute and then you're flashing back to young Theo and you're back in with young Theo for like 15, 20 minutes and then you're back with older Theo. But just the scenes that they cut and pieced together really weren't cohesive. So but that's that's my opinion, and um, you know, if I had to give it a grade, probably w I'd probably give it a C, to be honest. Um, which is incredibly sad because again, I I enjoyed the novel so much, but I would say I would say you know it, it gets a C from me, and um, and that's mostly based on the actors and the cinematography. Uh, that's that's the part I enjoyed the most. Um, all right, everybody. Thank you for listening to my review of The Goldfinch. Uh, Miguel will be back with us in the next video. He just happened to be out of town for this one. Um, but we're going to go see The Peanut Butter Falcon this week, also Hustler. So be on the lookout for that. Um, if you like our video, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we are also on Apple Podcasts and Spotify under Mad Mags. That's M-A-D-M-A-G-G-S. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll talk to you next time. <laughs>